Hello. Welcome or welcome back to Heretic Owl Tarot. My name is Liz and I will be guiding you on this journey today. Where is our Oracle deck? Here we go. Now we're prepared. Um, this is the reading for the 5-2 Heretic Hermit uh, Human Design Profile. If you don't know your profile, there's a link in the description below for you to get your human design body graph. There's a ton of great information on there, but for the purposes of these readings, we're just going based off of your profile. Um, I'm also doing zodiac sign readings, so uh, be sure to check out your rising, definitely your sun, of course, um, your moon, your Venus, whatever. If, a, if a, a title is calling to you, watch that. <laughs> watch that video. It's pretty open. So anyway, I'm, I'm glad that the energy of the Zodiac readings are back because for a while my guidance was to focus on the human design profile readings, which was a little nerve wracking because it like effectively took out half of the content that I was putting out, but strategy and authority, right? Like kind of responded to, to that. I'm emotionally author or I have emotional authority. So, you know, just going through, going through the, the wave, it felt good. So I, I, I rolled with it. And then, um, as I was getting prepared for these readings, I got that little fluttering to bring back the astrology reading. So here we are doing both. And I think it's just, it's an avenue for additional information too. You know, I mean, not every, not every Sagittarius is a five, two or not every Gemini is a five, two, whatever. Right. So that's why I like it. <laughs> so let's get you an oracle card. We'll get your tarot out. Let's start talking about it. Interesting. Let me... Hold, please. Okay. <laughs> because I think, um, I think YouTube is just kind of weird about... The female form so i don't want this video to get flagged i'm trying to expand my channel i'm trying to build it <laughs> not be banned so we have sacred fool interesting i mean immediately i was getting devil vibes just you know this this imagery here of control whether whether that's being controlled or being controlling we'll read about it once we get your tarot cards out but there is um in the in the light seers tarot the devil is holding somebody's soul like that like you know with the strings attached like a little puppet i might find it actually because <laughs> i have that tarot deck sitting right next to me we have the Queen of Swords, we have the Nine of Swords in the reverse, Seven of Swords, <laughs> lots of swords, Three of Cups, the Magician, one more. It's too many. The Hermit. Hmm. King of Cups at the bottom of the deck. Ten of Wands, the world. All right, let me just make sure everything is in frame and then we'll start talking about your reading. Okay, so let's see what the Sacred Fool is talking about. I might not, I might not read the whole thing because they're they're a little lengthy, but we'll just we'll see how far we get. 
The fool is a great rebel, able to thwart convention and tell the truth without restraint. Your heart is a wonderful, powerful, sacred fool. It cares not for the right way to do things. It cares not for what the mind says is real or not real. It lives according to an inner wisdom that cannot be di dictated to or controlled by anything. It loves, it lives, and it is what it is. This oracle heralds a time now or imminent when you feel inspired, alive, and passionate for what you can offer to the world. It says to you, don't try to be appropriate. Don't, don't try to be socially acceptable or worry about what others may think about what you are doing. Just be. If you want to wear a mad hat whilst doing so, fine. The sacred fool in you is willing to leave behind what has been because it no longer feels right to stay attached to it. The sacred fool in you trusts life completely. It would never occur to this part of you to try and outsmart life or resist its flow. It recognizes that the mind is a monkey puppet on strings. More often than not, it is conjoled into fear when it is when it could be playfully dwelling in the radical spontaneity of life. So the sacred fool in you urges your mind to let itself be pulled into joy by your heart strings, not into fear and doubt by the controlling machines of mass media. This oracle brings a message. It's time for you to play. It's time for you to let life happen in a completely unreserved, unscripted way. The more bizarre, left of field, unexpected, and apparently ridiculous, the better. This might not feel safe or appropriate at first. That is okay. That is good, actually. It is a sign that you are breaking with your own self-imposed convictions, conventions. I think both probably work. It is time to move beyond them now because a bigger life adventure is calling you. There was more, but... I feel like that pretty much sums it up. I feel like that pretty much sums up this whole reading. So I think it's beautiful when that happens, especially because, you know, we don't even read the Oracle card until the, t the cards are already on the table. And it's like the cards, not all the time, not every time, but there are times where it's like, okay, I could literally just end the reading right now. <laughs> because truly, and maybe I should in those times. I don't, I don't know. Have I ever? No. That'd be kind of funny though. Anyway, so we start with the Queen of Swords. This Queen of Swords to me, well, for one, let me start. <laughs> let me start by explaining what swords mean in case you don't know. Swords have to do with our mind. It's our thoughts, our beliefs, truth, honesty, but like divine truth, divine honesty. So objective, right? I mean, factual, what you can prove. I also say swords as a suit of ego because that's generally where we hear our ego is in our minds. We can feel it in our bodies, of course, but we hear it in our mind and our egos are created by the stories that we attach to experiences, to feelings, to circumstances, to ourselves, whether they're true or not and whether they're ours or not. But it becomes the reason why we do and don't do things. It becomes our personality, our identity, right? So queens are also, for me, when we embody the energy of the suit ourselves. So we recognize the energy within ourselves. We master that energy within ourselves. And so it would be clarity of thought, discipline, even being able to communicate clearly your thoughts your beliefs even getting clear on what those things are <laughs> and this queen is right in the middle of this maze here too so i kind of consider that to be like the maze of our minds but this queen what i was going to mention before she's holding on so tight to this sword here which to me is the ace of swords so it's like holding on so tightly to Maybe what you've been conditioned to believe was true. Maybe what you've tried to convince yourself was true. Maybe it was a tradition or something that was 
ingrained in you while growing up, which is, you know, I mean, conditioning. But there's this, this orb up here, this orb of light, which could be an idea. It could be the ultimate truth, really, like, you know, just kind of um, contained in this orb of light. But it's interesting because, again, right, I mean, she's holding on so tightly to what this sword is. And I feel like the book mentions that old belief systems, right? It's like departing from those, which I feel like a, a big part of human design is unraveling all of our conditioning, all of our traumas, all of our pain, like even just the way that we were living, you know, if you're a projector or a manifester or reflector, even right. And if for the most part, we're all raised to act like generators, <laughs> just, you know, output, 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 hustle, you know, whatever, um, getting shamed for rest, right. Or whatever. Um, but you know, a big part of human design is first of all, even recognizing, right. That like, I knew that these things in me were, were inherent. Like I knew that they were there and I, I maybe thought that they were flawed or something was wrong with me or, you know, I wasn't trying hard enough or, or whatever the case may be. Right. But then it's like, it's learning. No, <laughs> The, it's not working because I'm going against my own inherent design, right? But then like the queen of swords is trying so hard to hold on to that. And maybe for a time, it's like, you know, trying to figure out how you can uh, finagle things to still hold on to whatever that ace of swords is. But... I feel like this reading is all about releasing those ways of thinking, believing what you thought was true and, and mainly like it's somebody else's truth. Like, is it even true for you? <laughs> right? And it's paired with the Three of Cups, which is about community it's your peer groups, like who you identify with. This, of course, could be family, too. I mean, you know, there's two generations in this card. And then, you know, this hand down here is kind of like from our perspective. So, you know, the Three of Cups is about celebrating others, support from others. But again, it's like, you know, if... if it's the people that you identify with. It's the people that you gravitate towards. It's a community that you feel like you belong in. And if you are holding on really tightly because you're afraid to affect that, or if you're afraid to, you know, if, if you're afraid that like relationships are going to change. And it's, it's also interesting because in the first part, it says it cares not for what the mind says is real and not real. And all of these cards on the top are all swords. So it deals with our mind, what we believe. Right? <laughs> so it's interesting. Cannot be dictated to or controlled by anything. Hmm. And really, you know, the this, this three of cups... <laughs> I just, I kind of get this feeling about breaking free in some capacity it's like they're they're the this cheers that's going on is like a send-off she like her face looks like you go girl or you go boy um you know whichever you know it did whatever you know it's just the the phrase and then this figure on this side it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't imagine doing that in my generation. But I'm happy to see you do it type of thing. 
And this queen of swords could be you holding on to your truth, what is actually true for you, and taking action towards that. Even getting clear on what is true for you. Because like I said, queens are when we master the energy of the suit within ourselves. So it would be some sort of like mental clarity. This even feels like following your North Star here. Direction, purpose, but it's like based on what is true for you. <laughs> and then we have the Nine of Swords in reverse. So upright, nines are individual completion and this specific nine of swords feels like fighting your demons truly i mean right like almost literally the nine of swords talks about um, doubt fear anxiety it's like the things that keep us up at night which are you know i mean usually it's you know like i think brene brown calls them our gremlins like the things that that again kind of keep us up at night it's like those those intrusive thoughts or self-sabotage even but this is in the reverse so it feels like those things are not going to be holding you back maybe you have already allowed yourself to work through them or it's a matter of feeling the fear and doing it anyway because upright you would still be, you know, like working yourself through them. It is individual completion. So there is a point of like, it's like um, getting to the end of a video game. And it's like the last villain, like fighting the last villain <laughs> um, with the nine of swords. So if it were upright, I would say that you are like in the process of doing that. But with it being in the reverse, you could have already recognized what those demons are and you're like okay i see you i know you're here you've stopped me long enough but there's no more waiting there's no more like allowing ourselves to be held back by our own thoughts right so again it just it does have this feeling of not allowing your own thoughts to get in the way or not even your own thoughts but like your 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 demons like your ego right I mean the reasons why not the the things that try to keep us in homeostasis the things that try to keep us comfortable in our comfort zone right it's like eh, I'm aware of those things I'm not worried about how I'm going to be perceived. I'm not worried about the fear, the doubt, the anxiety. I'm, I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to do it. Because we also, we have the magician paired with it. The magician is, is a one, so it's a new beginning. This hat, you know, the, the as above, so below. I think there's a spiral in the middle, and spirals to me always signify evolution you know that whole saying like don't spiral evolve <laughs> and the magician says that you have exactly what you need right now to manifest the thing that you want to do most times we get hung up on the i don't have enough of this i don't have i don't have enough time i don't have enough money i don't have enough uh energy i don't have enough whatever you know the um passion i don't i don't i just don't have enough right <laughs> of something which is usually nine of swords upright but again it's in the reverse okay so those things are no longer or they should no longer be considered really i always think of harry potter with the magician because again, you know, sometimes we get hung up on what we don't have that we don't really even focus on what we do actually have. And the magician says you have exactly enough time. You have exactly enough money, even if it, that's $5. 
you have you know exactly the right amount of of energy whatever right but um the harry potter reference i think of the sword of gryffindor because it shows up to the exact person who needs it for the exact purpose that it that they need it for and that's the magician it's like you know you have what you need and anything else that you need will show up exactly when you need it for the purpose that you need it but it won't do that if you don't start putting what am i trying to say putting steps on the ground putting actions into the thing putting energy into the thing again even sh even following your strategy and authority getting familiar or comfortable with that even experimenting with that and seeing what happens because our strategy and authority is designed to um help us enter into the correct quote unquote experiences for us and the experience wouldn't be correct if there wasn't energy for us to to gain to experience to you know we wouldn't be there if we weren't supposed to be there right because our strategy and authority would have been like mm -mm. either it's a no or it's a not yet for that thing but it's a yes for this thing and most time the thing that we get that yes to it does just start you know like a domino effect and then we move on to the seven of swords the seven of swords to me is the card of us fooling ourselves like this is the card of self-sabotage for me because this is you know us telling ourselves that something's not possible that you know we don't have the capacity we don't have the capability whatever right this is you know they're hiding in a closet here like afraid to show themselves but the seven of swords usually traditionally talks about manipulation trickery robbery <laughs> because traditionally on the seven of swords there's a figure that's like tiptoeing away from a camp with all these swords carrying all these swords right and the purpose for them doing that is that they are handicapping their opponent because if their opponent doesn't have you know a level playing field because they don't have their swords then the the one side has a better chance of winning that's kind of where that manipulation thing comes from it's also a risk really because if that person got caught trying to steal those swords it would be bad <laughs> for them so it's also a risk this could be a calculated risk either way it's like you know a few things stay in your integrity don't start trying to manipulate shit <laughs> don't be manipulated either right but also don't fool yourself don't allow you know the 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 thoughts to keep you small to keep you hidden again you know just be aware of them with it paired with the hermit it could even be an experience in discovering what those things are and healing them because the hermit does talk a lot about healing because this is about going within and really only you can do it so you know the hermit is usually a lone wolf like they're on their own path which i believe the book was even talking about too having a unique path which i i feel like even for a fifth line especially a conscious fifth line i'm a five one um especially for a conscious fifth line it's like, like you can't do traditional anything like it doesn't feel good <laughs> at least that's how it is for me i'm like uh eh, that's already been been done i don't you know no i don't want to like regurgitate some something you know i mean it's one thing to be inspired by it's another thing to replicate right so um 
so the hermit is about following your own path, even discovering what that, that path is for you, allowing yourself to go on that path because it is unique to you. It could even be with it paired with the seven of swords. You know, it's like repairing, healing, deconstructing what the seven of swords is. Even, you know, holding the snake. Um, I mean, there's a Kundalini aspect to it. If, you know, just kind of literal, but also literal is the, the whole shedding skin. Because I believe, and I'm, I'm no reptile expert, but um, there's a guy on TikTok called Venom Man 2.0. And um, he has a ton of spiders and snakes, which I never thought. I would actually enjoy watching, but I love it. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, there's there's two reasons to shed a skin. One, they've outgrown it, right? And if they were to stay in that skin, they'd literally suffocate. Like, that's what happens if they get stuck in their shed, right? They suffocate. They dry out. It gets infected, whatever, right? But they in order to grow then you know like the they their biology whatever like it it induces this shed so reason one is to grow <laughs> reason two is to repair an injury or replace something like he had this um that venom man 2.0 he had this tarantula that was in this um, this carrier, this cage that had holes in it, and one of its fangs got stuck in the hole and it like ripped off. Not on video, thankfully, because that would have been horrible like to see that, poor thing. But um, anyway, so he was like, I just, I have to keep her alive until her next shed because she will regrow this fang during her shed. And sure as shit, well, he was able to keep her alive. <laughs> Because, you know, obviously she uses both fangs to feed, right? So he kept her alive with one fang and she shed and she regrew. She started to regrow that fang. So reason one is to grow. And, you know, if you have outgrown uh, an identity, a behavior, a life, right? Then this would signify, if you can hear those little beeps, you know, I'm, I'm taking those as confirmation. But, um... So you've outgrown something or it's repairing. It could even be both, really. You know, it's the the repairing something that was injured, whether that's, you know, and that's where that, that healing thing comes in. Okay. And then we have the King of Cups at the bottom of the deck. Kings are the highest expression of the suit. So this is where, you know, they, after the queen, right, they mastered it. Once you come to the king point, then you can become a leader. You can become an authority in a subject. People look up to you. You're able to regulate yourself, which helps to regulate other people. It's also even like one of those things I just heard, like healing yourself heals others. Even like a generational or ancestral thing. I mean, it like, you know, there's that whole thing about as you heal yourself, you heal the, the generations before you and the generations after you. We can see that, you know, they're on this ocean or whatever this is. And, and that looks crazy. <laughs> But they're standing on the literal edge of this boat or this ship. Water splashing out of their cup. And they're just, they're holding on to that rope like no big. Right? They have their, their sea legs under them. They're also even at the front of the boat. So it's, um, it's like, you know, I'm kind of getting this feeling about reassurance or like, like they are pretty sure that they're going to get through this, this storm here. Otherwise, like, why would they be standing? <laughs> I 
Like, why would they be standing on the side of the boat, up, up at the front of the boat? If there wasn't some level of confidence there. I don't know if I said this, but I probably did with the Three of Cups. Well, I don't know. I don't think I did. Cups have to do with our emotions. How are we feeling about ourselves, about our lives, about the people in our lives, about what we're doing? There's an empathy and compassion aspect with cups, emotional clarity, intuition also, steadfastness. I don't know. That just came to mind. We have the Ten of Wands behind the King of Cups. Tens are completion. This person, so wands have to do with action, the motivation behind the actions that we take creativity, passion. How are we communicating those things? What actions are we taking towards those things? I also see wands as being information because that's what we get by trying things. We figure out what works, what doesn't work, what do we like, what don't we like, what stays, what goes. And for me, the only way to figure that out is by taking action. Because it's one thing to think of all the possibilities and think of all the which ways that you know something can go and you know I already know how that's gonna go because I I thought about it <laughs> right I'm I'm very much like that type of person too I don't know if it's my Gemini 12th house I also have Mars there and my north node I'm not sure if that has something to do because I'm like I already know and I'm already bored <laughs> so I don't know if that has like something to do with it but um, but still, truly though, I mean, like there's been plenty of things where I'm like, I thought it was going to go this way, but then I start doing it and I'm like, it didn't go that way at all. <laughs> and even if it did, you know, whether I liked it or not, you know, I'm like, okay, if I do like it, I'm going to keep doing it this way. If I don't like it, I'm going to make these little tweaks and changes and, and, you know, pivot a little bit, whatever I need to do. So again, tens are completion. We can see this person carrying these 10 wands and this card usually does speak of burden because, you know, I, again, I see these 10 wands as being the lessons that you've picked up along the way. And that can be a burden, <laughs> but it's also, you know, it's, it's carrying those experiences with you into the the you're you're never starting from scratch because even though a 10 is a completion so we, we would then move on to the ace which is new so you know we never start from scratch we always start from experience so it's taking the lessons that you've already learned and applying them to what's next we have the world card the world card is the end of the fool's journey. It's, you know, it's getting exactly what you needed to get out of an experience. It's recognizing that that experience has ended, that that lesson, that whatever it is, has ended. And in order for the next step to occur, something has to, to end here. It is a true end of a cycle. And it's interesting. So, you know, we have this infant here that kind of looks like it's, you know, an incubation or in, in, in a proverbial womb, right? We have this, this figure eight, which, you know, just talks about the, the infinite flow of, of energy. We have this person looking through, it almost kind of looks like a keyhole, right? So there's this feeling of impatience or patience like both because you know like you're I, I'm thinking of that like was it Macy's commercial where they're like open 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 right <laughs> or even watching water boil like that type of feeling right like okay <laughs> this could be your inner child this could even just be something within you that is in utero like you know it's still in development it's and you're just kind of like keeping an eye on it like literally with this <laughs> with this world card just waiting for the time to be right 
And with the world card, I mean, I feel like it would be now-ish or it would be coming up because I think this card was talking about it's either now or it's imminent, like it's coming up soon. Ten of Pentacles, generational, like I, I think I was mentioning generational something. But this Ten of Pentacles, okay, I'm going to talk about it really quick. I don't want to keep you like too long. This Ten of Pentacles to me feels like breaking from tradition. Because, you know, there are these two hands here. This hand looks like it's older or aged. It does not look like these hands are actually even holding on to each other, but they're connected by these roots here. You know, I mean, the stair, it looks like there's stairs kind of going through both cards too. There's this family here. There's a house up here, right? There's this, this family kind of tree thing. The Ten of Pentacles does talk about like generational wealth. It's a 10 also, so it's completion. It's reaching a point of success in some aspect. But like I said, the only thing that's holding these two together are those roots. So to me, <laughs> there is a, a feeling of breaking from. Tradition in some aspect. Even, you know, like with this Sacred Fool card, like, you know, because these roots would, would be you know, similar to whatever these, these um, strings are on that little puppet. And if that's like the only thing that's making you, quote unquote, quote unquote, making you live a certain way, do certain things, cut, cut it, cut it out. <laughs> if you're old enough for <laughs> full house, cut it out. All right. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for allowing me to read your cards. I will talk to you soon. Bye.